eternal glory. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Poor Clare Sisters and myself, you're all very welcome to St. Clare's this morning. Welcome those joining us on our parish webcam as well. And welcome all of you who have come to celebrate the Requiem Mass for Paddy Conville. We have as, come as a community of faith to this church where Paddy, off down there in the corner, himself used to come and worship. We gather today to commend him to God, to ask God to grant him eternal rest, forgiveness for any failures. We have come, too, to offer the support of our prayers to his family, Phyllis, Mary, Patricia, Martin, Peter, Noel, Therese, Anya, Patrick, and Olivia, and all of the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren, the in-laws, his brother Owen, and all his extended family. May God strengthen you and give you peace this day. We come because we are Christians. We follow Jesus. We know that Jesus died, and he rose again, and he said, all who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. That's the great hope of our faith. And these words of comfort and many more are contained in the book of scriptures now, which I'm going to place on Paddy's coffin, because in life he cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ greet him now with the words of eternal life, come blessed of my Father. In baptism, he received the sign of the cross. May Paddy now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Friends, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. 
confident that God always remembers the good we do and forgives any failures, we now pray asking God to gather Paddy to himself. Lord, in our grief we now turn to you. Are you not the God of love who open your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for Paddy, whom you have called from this world. Lead him to your kingdom of light and peace. Count him now among the saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to listen to the word of God. I'm going to invite Mary Clare to come forward to read the first reading over here. And then the choir will lead us in the psalm, and then Gemma will read the second reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. This is the word of the Lord. Please all stand now as we greet you to gospel. be with 
you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If a person serves me, he must follow me. Wherever my servant, wherever I am, my servant will be there too. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I invite you now to be seated just for a few moments. We have begun August. For many people, it's the month of harvest. It's lovely to drive through the countryside at this time of the year to watch the shoots of the young wheat and the barley swaying in the wind and dancing in the sun. How strange the process by which the shoots came to be. The grain was buried in the cold earth, and that was a tomb. Then they have to die, and if they don't die, new life cannot emerge. And when they do die, shoots of new corn miraculously springs forth. In time, each of these shoots will produce a whole earful of new grains of corn. And it's an amazing paradox. Life comes forward to death. When we think of Jesus' own life as well, he surrendered himself into God's hand on the cross. He died and was buried in the tomb. But God rescued him from the tomb and gave him new life. His hour of death and darkness and even humiliation became the hour of his glory. His death won eternal life for all of us. When Jesus wanted to describe death and resurrection, he used that lovely image in today's gospel of the seed dying in the ground in order to produce new life. And our lives, too, follow the example of the grain of wheat. We know that when we die, we will produce new life in heaven. We're also called, too, that in this life, we are all called to create a harvest of all that we do so that when God calls us home, he can welcome us for what we have done in this life. We think of Paddy today. We think of him growing up in a little barrack street in Carlow. We think today of Murta and Mary, his parents. They sowed the seeds of faith for him too. Paddy was a second of the family of five, two boys and three girls. He worked in the sugar factory during the campaigns. In cold rolling mill too, he worked as a steel roller. Many people would remember him as the caretaker down in St. Felix Hall for our parish bingo. We'll have to set it all up. And then when the bingo goers were gone, he would have to tidy everything up and get it ready for the next event. He would always invite his children to come and help him to do that work as well. 
We think of him too, um, marrying to Teresa. And I know they lived for a time in Staples Town Road and eventually in the 1960s moved to Henry Street. And that was his home right until he died, where he received care and love too, to enable him to continue to live life and live it to the full. So today as we remember Paddy, his life, we remember too that story of the grain of wheat. And we are confident that God who brings faith forth wheat from seeds will, in, will bring um, Paddy now to the fullness of life in heaven. So today we remember that the important thing in life is living our lives so that when God calls us, we will be able to present a rich harvest to God. It is necessary for us to die in order to rise again in God's kingdom. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Paddy, O Lord, and lay perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. So I you now to please stand for our prayers of the faithful. And so we turn now to a loving, caring God with all our needs. God of all consolation, help us to comfort one another, finding light in time of darkness and faith in time of doubt. Lord, hear us. We pray for all whose lives are dedicated to caring for the sick and the housebound. May God reward all the people who are good to Paddy in this life for their goodness and kindness. Lord, hear us. In the face of trauma of death, we ask the Lord to walk with us in faith and hope, because with our human eyes, all we see is pain and separation. Lord, hear us. Lord, we ask your blessing today on all who are seriously ill. Be close to them in their time of sickness, and if it is your will, heal them, restore them to full health again. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have gone before us. We think of Paddy's parents. We think of all his relations. May Paddy be reunited with them now in God's kingdom, where there is no more pain or suffering or hurt. Lord, hear us. And for a moment now, we pause to pray our own special intentions. We also pray today for the repose of the soul of Cathy Keating Carl Seven Springs, who has died, and Cathy's funeral mass will be celebrated here in St. Clair's at 1.30 p.m. today, with burial afterwards, and in St. Mary's Cemetery. We pray for Cathy today, Lord, grant her eternal rest, and bring comfort to her family and all who mourn this day. Lord, hear us. So, Lord, give us the certainty that beyond death there is a life where broken things are mended, when lost things are found, where there is rest for the weary and joy for the sad, where all that we have loved and willed of good exists, where we will meet again those who have come before us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all be seated. Now we're going to continue with the Eucharist, the Mass, which is the center of prayer of our faith, where we recognize the presence of Jesus. We know he died and went back to heaven, but he said, I'm always with you when you come and celebrate Mass. I'm going to invite Olivia and Patricia to bring to the altar now the gifts of bread and wine. <laughs>
pray now, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of Paddy, we beseech your mercy that Paddy himself, who never doubted Jesus to be a loving Savior, may now find a merciful judge. We ask this to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as one alone he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. As one he chose to die so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we now proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, giving thanks. He broke it, gave it to his friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given In the same way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his friends and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And then he said, Do this in memory of me. So now we proclaim together in song the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have saved. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our bishop, and all people. Remember Paddy, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that Paddy, who is united with your son in a death like his, may now be one with him in resurrection. Remember all our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, with St. Clair, St. Felix, St. Francis, St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheres to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we now pray through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
So now we stand as we pray to a loving, a caring Father. We take, pray today for courage and strength. We pray for peace and we pray too for acceptance. We pray the prayer Jesus himself taught us. And so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin, safe from all worries, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We wish those around us now to sign God's peace. I invite you to kneel as we prepare to receive Jesus in communion. This now is Jesus. This is his body and his blood. This is Jesus who died on the cross, who rose again, who promised all of us new life. This is Jesus who is the source of our strength, our hope, our peace this day. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon him with all your saints forever, for you are rich in mercy.
So now I invite Phyllis to come forward to say a few words. On behalf of all the family, I'd like to thank everyone who's helped us and supported us in various ways in the last couple of weeks, whether it was offering sympathy, sharing memories. Um, also, I'd like to thank the people overseas who are probably joining us on the video link. Um, to everybody who's added to um, Daddy's life over the years, whether it was spending time with him, showing him kindness, um, things like picking up his wheelchair, his um, mobility scooter when it broke down, the people who did shopping for him, it's, um, we're very appreciative of all the help that he was given. In particular, we would like to say a huge thank you to Deirdre, his care worker, um, who helped him on a daily basis. Also, there was a staff and volunteers at St. Felix House who helped him uh, to be able to live independently at home for as long as he could. Um, we would like to thank St. Luke's Hospital for their care and attention throughout his illness and in his final days. Uh, we'd like to say thank you to Mark and Pat at Carpenters Undertakers for their professionalism, their patience and their attention to detail. Uh, the men's choir was a special request from Daddy and thanks to all of you for the gorgeous singing and the organ playing as well. Thanks. Uh, finally, uh, thanks to Father John and everyone at St. Clare's here at the church, everybody who's made the church all look gorgeous. Uh, thanks to poor Claire Nuns as well for joining us this morning. Uh, and just thanks to everybody really for kindness and sympathy and support. Thank you. So thanks, Phyllis. Again, thank you all for being here. And I know we will all keep Paddy's family in our prayers over the days and months and years ahead. So please stand now for our prayer after communion. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Paddy may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever. So now the Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. We come now to our farewell prayers for Paddy. It's not final, it's farewell, because we all believe that we will be reunited in God's kingdom. So before we go our separate ways, we take leave of Paddy. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we should joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. We pray for a few moments in silence for Paddy, for the repose of his soul. I'm going to sprinkle his coffin with holy water from the baptismal font as a reminder of his baptism. The day Murta and Mary brought him to church to share with him their greatest gift, the gift of faith. The day he joined the Christian community, the day he began his Christian journey, and the day he received the promise of heaven for the first time. We also incense his coffin to show our reverence for the human body, we bury the body, but we know his soul is now gone to God, like risen like the smoke of the incense. Yeah. Hey.
So our response is, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Eternal rest grant unto Paddy, O Lord, and a perpetual light shine upon him. We pray into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in this sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We thank you all for all you gave him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Paddy and help also remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Paddy forever. In peace now let us take our brother to his place of rest. Amen.